live from Las Vegas, it's theCUBE, covering AWS reInvent 2019. Brought to you by Amazon Web Services and Intel, along with its ecosystem partners. Welcome back to theCUBE, Lisa Martin live on the show floor of AWS reInvent 19 with Stu Miniman. This is the, almost the end of our second day of coverage, and as we were just saying, there's more people in here now than there were probably a couple hours ago. 65,000 or so folks that AWS is expecting here, and I think they're all in the expo hall now. Stu and I are pleased to welcome from Amazon Business, David Stout, the head of Global Alliances and Partnerships. David, welcome to theCUBE. Thanks so much for having me. Excited to be here this afternoon. So everybody on the planet knows Amazon.com. It yep. has transformed our lives. I also think that it's transformed us as consumers and put pressure on any business to be able to deliver to us what we want whenever well, right. We want it. Yeah, everybody Tell this week's getting alerts on their phones of package <laughs> deliveries oh, uh, of course. this week. Yes. That's probably one of the best you know, parts of your day is when that Amazon package shows up and it's so fast, I always forget, what did I order? <laughs> I hope it's for me. <laughs> but I'd love for you to share with our audience what Amazon business is. Yeah, so obviously, uh, as you said, we all know about Amazon. We all know about AWS, right? 65,000 people here this week. Uh, Amazon business is a group that's been around since 2015 and we're focusing specifically on the needs, to, uh, procurement needs of business and institutional customers. All right, so the, the, the big theme that we heard from Andy Jassy was talking about transformation. Uh, we can't incrementally change the environment, so tell us a little bit what happens in your space and how that ties into the, those transformations. Yeah, a couple things. So, so one, we, like I said, we started in 2015 um, focusing on, on both private and public sector customers, and what we're really trying to focus on is that experience you talked about for consumers, taking that same ease of use and experience to the business world. Uh, corporate procurement is really hard and cumbersome. There's a lot of tools that need to be in, in, uh, used. And so we're trying to drive that same ease of use into the corporate and uh, public sector world as well. So one of the things that we've done, um, we, we launched in 2015 as I said. We don't uh, share a lot of details, but we did uh, about a year ago announce that we're on about a $10 billion annualized run rate. We're in nine countries around the world, so outside of the United States, we're also live in Germany, the United Kingdom, France, Italy, Germany. Spain, India, France, uh, sorry, India, Japan, and just announced last month that we're in Canada. So it's a, a fast growing business and we continue to try to find ways, our customers are great to give us feedback on how we can continue to innovate to serve their needs. Yeah, you know, it's funny, I have some history in my career working with procurement organizations and change is not something I hear from them. <laughs> when I think of public sector, it's like, well, it's on the GSA contract, we right. negotiated from the years. When you go to companies and you say, hey, we've got the new product, oh, well, I got to go through the procurement cycle to get that through these environments. So how w do we make sure that companies can take the innovation, you know, be agile, and you know, take advantage of these things now from yeah. a procurement standpoint. Yeah, so there's a couple things. So um, one, this week you're hearing a ton about digital transformation, right? Um, something that isn't an event, it's an ongoing evolution. One of the things, you know, we've been coming to, um, uh, to reInvent for four years now, and what we're seeing and, and continually seeing is that there's a convergence between the IT strategies and the procurement strategies. Um, a lot of that is happening through uh, technology and enablement of new technology, um, but it's a, it's a super interesting observation for us uh, sitting on the sidelines and helping drive some of that innovation for customers. The role of the Chief Procurement Officer has changed a lot in recent years alone where this role, as you're saying, there's this now convergence with IT, but the CPO has a much bigger opportunity now to become much more of a strategic yeah. driver of business, whether it's evaluating supply chain management and looking for ways to streamline operations. Yep. This is a big shift from the financial perspective. Talk to us about some of the things that Amazon Business is seeing in your customers and how it is enabling those two sides, the IT folks and the procurement folks to come together so that what they're en enabling is that digital business transformation. Sure, yeah, absolutely. So, you know, historically, procurement teams, off CPOs and their teams, were responsible for very traditional things, sourcing, contract management, risk management, supplier onboarding and offboarding, compliance with, you know, to your point earlier, Stu, on uh, regulations and is it on a schedule or not. 
Um, those are all still really important uh, attributes and, and will continue to be huge focus areas for those organizations, but I think with the advent of technology, what you're starting to see is a lot more focus on how do we use artificial intelligence? How do we use uh, RPA? How do we just use machine learning to find new opportunities to drive efficiencies within those operations? And so, uh, I think because of that, what you're starting to see is a lot more uh, harmonization between what CPOs are thinking about and the strategies they're employing and the CIOs, and we're really seeing a convergence between those two organizations. Um, we published, Amazon Business published an article uh, with ProcureCon uh, a couple months ago, and one of the findings that came out of that study was that there is a convergence happening. Over 55% of the respondents said that their goals are either fully aligned or mostly aligned with the goals of, of the CIO organization. So we're, we're Pretty excited about that happening. We think that we're going to be helping customers continue to drive that collaboration. And for forward thinking um, organizations that are trying to drive more technology, we believe it's going to be a requirement and essential. That, that's awesome. It, it, it aligns with some of the broader trends we've been seeing in cloud adoption overall. It can't be IT and the business separately doing their things. Um, you know, help us understand how this you know, movement forward translates into innovation for, for, for customers. Yeah, so a couple things come to mind. Um, AWS, uh, there's a number of things happening here. AWS uh, yesterday, oftentimes is, is, sorry, oftentimes AWS is, is considered as a starter for when you think about digital transformation and cloud transformation. Um, I, the pace of that evolution is, is amazing, right? Uh, yesterday there were 14 press releases uh, issued on new technologies and capabilities that AWS is delivering uh, directly or through partners. Um, and I think those types of things are helping drive uh, that, that pace of evolution that we talked about earlier. Uh, one of the things that I found really interesting is uh, AWS has a partner network, it's very mature, there's tens of thousands of partners, they launched it in 2013 and it's a huge portion of their business and growth. Uh, Amazon Business is much younger in our, in our maturity, uh, and we're just starting to launch a partner network, but one of the things we're really interested in is how do we work with third-party organizations, and my team's responsible for really extending the range and reach of our traditional sales, marketing, and services channels by working with third parties. Those take the forms of primarily software companies, so you see uh, ERP organizations, uh, e-procurement so uh, platforms, and accounting expense management platforms as examples there. Um, and, and the infrastructure providers that, that leverage that. So Okta uh, is an identity management provider. They're a sponsor of reInvent this year. Um, they're a partner of Amazon Business, and we've built a pre-configured uh, integration that will allow Okta customers um, that, are, that are using their single sign-up product to access the Amazon Business uh, uh, store uh, easily and within the controls that they've established. Yeah, it, it actually, we, we just had Dave McCann from the AWS Marketplace yeah. uh, uh, on the program earlier, and, and we've watched the you know, evolution and maturation of Marketplace. Uh, how, how does that tie into world? Uh, allowing uh, really, you know, I, I, I've been calling for years, it's as close as what we have to the enterprise app store yeah. uh, there. So how does this play into your yeah, world? Yeah, so you know, I think there's going to continue to be convergence between Amazon Business and AWS over time and, and the marketplace. We offer kind of a goods marketplace, they offer a software marketplace and a, and a services marketplace. And so I think we're still working on how do we harmonize that experience better and we've got a lot of work to do there. Uh, we have a saying at Amazon that it's always day one and that's a great example where we still have a lot of work to do. Um, but one of the things that is uh, another one of our partners, Coupa, which is a, a procure-to-pay platform and a long-time Amazon business partner, uh, we've done some pretty creative things to improve the user experience and make it easier for customers to use both Coupa and Amazon business in, in concert together. Coupa announced a couple months ago that they've built a, an integration to the AWS marketplace. And so um, that's a pretty exciting opportunity where uh, people who are provisioning services via AWS, the AWS Marketplace can have that, that transaction flow seamlessly into their procure to pay solution and let you know, the user who's provisioning that focus on what they want to do, which is developing new solutions to serve customers. Yeah, Coupa is one of the, our CUBE clients. I was just covering their event, Coupa London, just yeah. a few weeks ago. One of the things that's interesting about them, and I'd love to get your feedback on that, is their community is really massively influential in their technology, yep. and I presume in terms of the partnerships yep. that they forge, and as really catalysts for that procurement role being so strategic to the business. Talk to us about some of the customers that you are working with, and those third party folks as well. How are they influencing the roadmap of Amazon business? Yeah, so our customers are, um, 
never shy to tell yeah, us what say, we need to be vocal. better at, right? <laughs> and that's one of the things that we've been able to grow so quickly, right? So we have, uh, we've segmented our business into four verticals, so we focus on healthcare, education, government, and then commercial, which is our, our largest segment. We have customer advisory boards from each one of those segments, and those are very intimate working sessions with everyone from micro customers up to Fortune 100 customers that, that are never shy, as I said, to provide feedback on what we need to do better. I was uh, with a client last week who, um, and one of our partners who, it was great to hear them say, we love, they just had been at a, uh, at a customer advisory board and they said, we love the fact that those uh, features we suggested to you 12 months ago are now in production. And so, it's a huge part of what we do, it's a huge part of what drives our roadmap. Um, we have probably the most um, sophisticated voice of customer feedback monitoring systems that, that I've seen and that includes everything from how, you know, how our sales uh, professionals talk to customers and log that feedback on feature requests, to monitoring social feeds, to understanding what do our customers want. So it's um, it's a big part of what we do and how we do it, and um, I think it's one of the things that makes Amazon a, a really differentiated company. That's Amazon business with Amazon overall. All right, so David, I think most people, not only do they know Amazon, but many of them, including Disclaimer myself, are Amazon Prime customers. Yeah. You oh, also yeah. have something called Business Prime. Maybe explain a little bit what that is. Yeah, so, so uh, most of us are, are Prime members as consumers, and there's a number of features that come with that. There's a shipping program, which is where it started, and then we've added different solutions, whether it's music or video or, or storage. Um, Amazon Business has the same philosophy, and so right now there are, we have a, a Business Prime shipping program, uh, which was launched two years ago. We also have a, uh, other Business Prime offerings, including uh, advanced analytics, so within um, Amazon Business, the Amazon Business Portal, you can actually look at uh, spend categorization, and we've got some pretty powerful data visualization capabilities, that's a prime benefit. And we have a, a pretty extensive roadmap for other features that are going to continue to come. We have some financing vehicles that are tied to it uh, ex already, and there's, there's a lot on the roadmap. Well, if you need some more business videos for your Business Prime customers, give us a call. We have a large library uh, with okay. Amazon for that. Thank you, I appreciate that <laughs> tip, I'll let you know. Let's talk about security. It is a fundamental component of any organization because there is so much data and we're only generating more and more and more. Businesses need to ensure that how they're transacting with any organization and that their data is managed in a secure way. What are some of the fundamental elements of Amazon Business that you guys have built into the technology to deliver that security for your business yeah. customers. Yeah, so first of all, we're built fully on AWS, as you would expect, and so there's, there's just- They're happy about that, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> so um, so there's, there's, that's, that's just a, a safety feature that I think gives, gives most of us comfort. I think back to this kind of notion of convergence of IT and procurement, this is something I find really interesting. And so, um, this ProcureCon article I mentioned a few minutes ago, one of the findings in that was that 70% um, of, of respondents said that their security strategy is shared jointly between their IT and their procurement teams. And so, obviously, security here at reInvent, you walk the expo floor, there's an entire row of things that are focused on security and, and how to continue to drive uh, that within the cloud in an efficient way. Um, this whole concept of IT and procurement coming together to share objectives, I think that's a great example where it's already happening, and we continue to expect that it will happen in, in more detail. What are, uh, are some of the things that surprised you most about the last day and a half with all the announcements, the folks understanding more about Amazon business, some of the feedback that you've gotten on the show floor or in customer meetings that, that kind of highlight, yeah, we're doing the right thing here. Yeah, so I think for, it, it, it's always humbling um, when people don't know about us, right? Uh, as I said, we've built a pretty big business, but we're, it's still really, really early. Um, and so it's, to me, that's a great opportunity that we can continue to do more to educate customers about the opportunity and how Amazon can help transform their procurement practices. It's still super early, so we're always wanting to hear that feedback and what else can we do. Um, for customers that, that are, are, are aware of us, what's been really also humbling is how much uh, they're finding us to be a bigger and bigger portion of their strategic vision in the future. And so we're really excited about that on both fronts, right? The opportunity to do more, but also that customers who are adopting us are seeing great opportunities to, you know, consolidate their suppliers, uh, drive greater efficiencies, and most importantly, provide a better end user experience that they're used to from their home purchasing. Of this last question for you, looking at the vertical focus that you guys are taking, you mentioned the verticals. Any of them in particular that are really kind of leading the way here for that IT procurement strategic collaboration? You mentioned healthcare, commercial, anything that you really see as 
early adopters leading edge? Yeah, so we actually see, um, th there's probably some, some nuances between each vertical, but we've seen some great adoption across all uh, four of those verticals. So we have um, 55 of the Fortune 100 as customers, we have 80% uh, of the largest educational institutions in the U.S. as customers. We have uh, greater than 50% of the largest health systems in the U.S. as customers already, and greater than 40% of the largest municipalities in the United States. So, so we've seen some really great adoption across all four segments. Again, I think the needs of, of a small dentist office are going to be different than the needs of an industrial manufacturing organization, and so we continue to find solution sets that will address the needs of each one of those customers. We have strategic teams that are focused specifically on those segments and how to solve them, and as I said before, customers will always tell us what we can do better at. <laughs> that's and that's really what drives our innovation. And where can folks go, business owners, small and large, to learn more about Amazon Business? Amazon.com slash business. Easy yeah. enough. David, thank you for joining Stu and me on the program and sharing with us what Amazon business is. We appreciate it. Yeah, you're very welcome. Thanks for having me. All right. First, Stu Miniman, I'm Lisa Martin, and you're watching theCUBE from day two of our coverage of AWS reInvent 19 from Vegas, signing off. Thanks for watching. <laughs>